Hello everyone, this is Hating Tian. In this video, let's learn uh, 1.4, solving quadratics by completing the square. Uh, let's see what we have learned before. We have learned that the perfect square of the trinomial, they are a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. It is, if we, I, I want to factor this uh, um, trinomial, I will have a plus b squared because the first term is something squared and last term is something squared too. So in the middle is two a times b. And then we are having a plus b squared. If the middle term is minus two ab, we have a squared minus two ab plus b squared. That equals a minus b squared. So let's do the review of these two uh, trinomials. The first one, x squared plus 4x plus 4. First term is x squared. Last term is 4. That's 2 squared. That is x squared plus 4x plus 2 squared. That is a perfect square, x plus 2 squared. And the second one, x squared minus 6x plus 9. That is x squared minus 6x plus 3 squared equals x minus 3 squared. Okay, so completing the square form. If we have x squared plus bx, then the third term is the b divided by two squared, then I can have a perfect square uh, factor form, x plus b over two squared. If we have x squared minus bx plus b divided by two squared, then we will have x minus b over two squared. So the third term uh, is the half of the coefficient of the second term. So if we only have the first two terms, the variable terms, how to, com uh, how to complete the square by adding, adding a third term? Let's see the example 35. If we have x squared plus 10x, then I need to plus the half of the middle variable, uh, the half of the middle value, that's it's 10. So 10 over two. We square it, then we will create a perfect square that equals x plus 10 over 2, that is 5 squared. Next example, x squared minus 14x plus the half of the 14, that's 14 over 2, square it. You can continue to simplify the third term. That is x squared minus 14x plus seven squared. This is a perfect square, x minus seven squared. So solve each equation by completing the square. And we, uh, if we are solving an equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero by completing the square and applying the square root property. The first step, divide both sides by a to make the leading coefficient one. So look at the example 49, 51, and 53, 55. The leading term, they are all x squared. So the leading coefficient, the number in front of the x squared, it is one. We don't need to do the step one because they are all ones. Uh, step two, isolate the variable terms on one side of the equation. Leave the only x term or variable term on one side of the equation and move other terms to another side. Uh, number three, complete the square. Uh, add the third term, then cre create a perfect square. Add the third term both sides, then we have the new uh, perfect square. Uh, number four, apply the square root property and solve for the x. 
Let's see the first example. Um, first, we see the leading coefficient is one, so we don't need to divide it by any constant. And the second step, x terms, if they are on one side of the equation, so we need to create the third term, x squared minus 2x, we must have add, add the half of the middle value. The half of the middle value is 2 over 2 squared equals 2. If you add something on one side of the equation, you also need to add the same amount of number on another side. We have x squared minus 2x plus this is two or two is one, one squared is one equals two, or you can put the square here. Two plus two over two squared is one squared is one. On the left hand side, we have a perfect square, x minus one squared equals three. Then we take the square root to both sides. When we are taking the square root for the variable x plus one, then we need to have a plus or minus on the right hand side, right? X minus one equals plus or minus square root of three. And uh, we add one both sides, X equals one plus or minus square root of three. You can also list them in the set notation. They are one plus square root of three, comma one minus square root of three. Next example. So we leave two variable terms on the left hand side. We have x squared minus 6x. Get rid of the minus 11. I can add 11 both sides. So we have 11 on the right hand side. Then we need to create the third term to, uh, uh, to create the new uh, perfect square. x squared minus 6x plus 6 over 2 squared equals 11 plus 6 over 2 squared. Then we have x squared minus 6x uh, plus 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared equals 11 plus 3 squared. On the left hand side, we have a perfect squared that is x minus 3 squared equals 11 plus nine, um, 3 squared, that's 11 plus 9. We have 20. And take the square root to both sides, right? When you're taking square root, you must have a positive or negative sign here. Let's put a red symbol here. We have, at, because the square root and square canceled, x minus 3 equals plus or minus square root of 20. What is the square root of 20? Can you simplify the square root of 20? I know square root of 20 equals four times five in the radical sign. And four is two squared. So I can bring out the two or you do that step by step. Square root to square canceled. We have two square root of five. So, if we know that uh, square root of 20 is two times square root of five, let's simplify that. Then get rid of the minus three both sides. I can add the three both sides. X equals three plus or minus two square root of five. Uh, you can list them in the set notation, three minus two square root of five comma three plus to square root of five. Okay. Let's see next three examples. This one, we need to isolate the variable term on the left hand side, get rid of the one, subtract the one both sides. We have x squared plus four x equals negative one. Then create the third term, x squared plus four x plus, the half of the middle, uh, middle coefficient, that's a four over two squared equals negative one plus the create the third term you have created, four over two squared. 
simplify the expression. X squared plus 4X plus 2 squared equals negative 1 plus, uh, this is 2 squared, which is 4. We have X plus 2 squared equals 3. And take the square root of both sides. We have X plus 2 equals positive negative square root of 3. So be careful. I, I, I know that some of you will make a mistake when you are taking square root of the variable. Then uh, I can get rid of the 2 by subtracting 2 both sides x equals negative 2 plus or minus square root of 3. Next one. So isolate the variable terms on the left hand side. I can subtract the 25 both sides. We have x squared plus 8x uh, equals negative 25. We can create the third term, x squared plus 8x plus eight over two squared equals negative 25 plus eight over two squared. Um, let's continue to simplify. What is eight over two squared? X squared plus eight X plus eight over two is four. Four squared is uh, 16, but we can keep the four squared here and negative 25 plus um, four squared is 16. That is negative nine. Then we have a perfect square on the left-hand side. X plus four squared equals negative nine. Mm. Something squared is a negative nine. So the left-hand side should be uh, left hand side in the parentheses should be a imaginary number or complex number. So take the square root uh, from both sides. We have x plus four equals positive negative square root of negative nine. Then we subtract the four both sides. x equals negative four plus or minus square root of negative nine. What is square root of negative nine? We know that square root of negative nine equals square root of nine times negative one. That is three, uh, that is square root of nine times square root of negative one. Square root of negative one is i, and square root of nine is three, three i. So we have x equals negative four plus or minus three i. Let's see, next one. Let's uh, leave the two variables on the left-hand side. x squared plus 3x. Um, we can add one both sides. Equals one. And create the third term, x squared plus 3x plus the middle coefficient, that is three, divided by two squared. On the right hand side, we have one plus three over two squared. We have the perfect square on the left is x plus three over two. And then on the left hand side, we have one plus three over two squared. What is three over two squared? Is that the three squared over two squared. Yes, it is. So we have nine over four. I should use this color, nine over four. Okay, so x plus three over two squared equals one plus nine over two over four. So how to combine a number and a constant Oh, sorry, a fraction together, a whole number and a fraction. If I add two fractions together, they must have the same uh, denominator, but one doesn't have a denominator. We can create a denominator for one. Denom denominator, the bottom must be four. So one multiplied by four over four. 
and then plus nine or four. So one times four over four, that is four over four. Four over four. So four over four plus nine over four. Why I put, I always put the two there. Okay. We add the tops together. They are numerators. Four plus nine over four. That is 13 over four. So we have 13 over four. X plus three over two squared equals 13 over four. Then take the square root of both sides. We have X plus three over two equals plus or minus square root of 13 over four. And then we subtract the three over two both sides. Uh, we have, let's clear this area. We have X equals negative three over two. Plus or minus square root of 13 over four. Then continue to simplify the uh, expression negative three over two plus or minus because you have a square root of 13 over four that equals square root of 13 divided by square root of four. And the, the denominator, the bottom is two because square root of four is two. So we have square root of 13 over two. Since these two, they are fractions, I can, they have the same bottom, same denominator. I can add them together. X equals negative three, the tops together, plus or minus square root of 13 over two. So this is uh, uh, the final solution. You can list them in the set notation. They are negative three plus square root of 13 over two or negative three minus square root of 13 over two. Okay, that's the last question of chapter 1.4. If you have any question, you can uh, email me or join the office hour online or visit me in my office. Okay, uh, see you next video. Have a good one.